Then she turned around and saw Jesus stood in bed, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She thought he was the gardener, so she said, Sir, did you carry him away? Tell me where you put him. Then I will go and get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him. Then she cried out in, in, in the Aramaic language, Rabbani, Rabbani means teacher. Jesus said, Don't, do not hold on to me. I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead, go to those who believe in me. Tell them I am ascending to my Father and you, your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. She said, I have seen the Lord. He told them the things he had said, said to her. What are the Lord? Father Eric is going to give the chapel talk this morning.
with Jesus in the garden. And she doesn't recognize him at first, but then she realizes it's Jesus. And this story is one of several that we call a resurrection experience. And it's a, it's a story that's at the heart of Christian faith. All the fear and sorrow about Good Friday, about the death of Jesus, is somehow transformed by an experience of the risen Christ who has risen from the tomb. And Mary, in this story, is the first one to experience that. So for Christians, this story is all about the, you know, the project that you did of, of seeds that transform to living things and the hopes of, the, of things that are dead and buried and <coughs> coming to new life. And all the things about the story of Christian resurrection, that's embodied in this story. And that's a central there are other re resurrection stories, and Amber talked a little bit about it in a previous chapel talk. So that's a central part of this story. But there's also another part that's, kind of, that's interesting and the story has to tell us. First of all, it's fascinating that Mary was the first one to experience <coughs> the risen, risen Lord, and she goes and tells the other disciples. And in the church, Mary has a special place, especially in the Eastern Church. Mary is known as the first evangelist. She's the first one to tell the good news. And that actually is really important because in biblical times, women weren't, didn't always have a high spot in society. They weren't always looked at as equals to men. And yet here, in this story, Mary has the, the uh, prestige of being the first apostle to the other disciples. And that resonates with some other things about the story of Jesus. Jesus, in his life, was always reaching out to people who were marginalized, who didn't have an honored spot in society. If you remember some of the stories about Jesus, when he encountered a group of lepers, what did he do? Did he just walk on by and ignore them? No, he stopped and he engaged with them. And he healed. We have several stories of him healing people who, uh, <clears throat> people who had leprosy. Same way with a person born blind, Jesus didn't just walk by, but he engaged with them. And there are several stories, if you know the story of the Good Samaritan, where uh, Samaritans had a different belief, and yet rather than being at odds with them, Jesus told a story about the Good Samaritan, and he met a Samaritan woman at a well, and he treated her with love and with kindness. And so this fits into that story of Jesus embracing other people, especially people with differences. Now, one of the things about humans through human history is it's almost a part of human nature that people have been afraid of differences. Through human history, people have been afraid of people that look different, people that might be from a different country and have different customs. Uh, and that has been a struggle that humans have had all through human history. And so maybe one way to think about the story, let's go back to that empty tomb again and think about a cemetery and the tomb. Those might represent the things that we are afraid of. Things where our fears, if we let them, overtake us. And the great thing about this story and about Easter is that it reminds us that Jesus in his life and ministry reached out across differences. He embraced people who were different than himself. He wasn't afraid if someone looked different or talked different. And that is one of the things that you all in this school community 
have, it's kind of part of the air that you breathe. You have learned to embrace people and classmates that have differences. And that is one of the great lessons of the Easter story, is that when we talk about new life, we talk about the adventure of learning, not just embracing differences, but knowing that we can learn from those differences. And that is something that makes our community richer and more vibrant. And so the great story of, of <clears throat> from this Easter story is that new life is something that enriches and makes our community more joyful, more abundant, and something to celebrate. We pray. For eighth graders who are going off to high school soon. We pray. For my friend Debbie, whose father passed away last week, and also for the Curry family who lost their mother last week. We pray. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the strength of the daily bread, and forgive us our justices, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Um, 
support of each other. We get up here every, all the time, every almost every day, and talk about it, right? And that is extraordinary, almost every day. And almost every day, we know that there are those in the community who are not feeling that. And it is a reminder that we work harder every single day so that everybody in the community is feeling loved, embraced, and accepted. Loved, and embraced, and accepted, despite differences and because of differences. Go on, thanks. I invite you to stand, and we'll sing our closing song. It's on page 61, I Am the Resurrection. Go in peace to love and serve all people.